by far one of the most asked questions on this channel is how can I use AI as a discovery writer? And you may have also heard the term pantser, someone who writes by the seat of their pants. I've honestly been putting this off a little bit because I am not a discovery writer, but I decided to finally buckle down after reading this book recently by uh, Jay Thorne about his process of discovery writing and finally buckled down, got together some thoughts, gathered information from a bunch of other people that I found and came up with some systems that are really good for discovery writers because AI can still be a really valuable tool for you as well. Let's get into it. The first way that you can use AI is to continue brainstorming because I feel like a lot of discovery writers still brainstorm a lot of ideas. They'll brainstorm some character ideas um, and you might be brainstorming along the way in the process. You might be finding like, oh, I, I need something here, some character that can fill this role. And then on the fly, you're kind of making that stuff up and the AI can still help you really well in those areas. And so look at anything that I've mentioned before about how to brainstorm a novel because those are still relevant tips for discovery writers. But after the brainstorming process, it gets a little trickier because a lot of the times I recommend people build a synopsis and then from there flesh out the synopsis into a full outline and then flesh out the outline into story beats and so forth. And that's just obviously not the kind of uh, process that discovery writers would have. And so the best way that I've found and the way that most people seem to be using it is to just edit as you go and make up the story as you go. So I'll give you an example. All right, so I'm here in Claude that I'm using for this demonstration, but this kind of applies to ChatGPT as well. You can use either one. And I've given it, write me the first 500 words of a cozy mystery scene that opens up at the scene of the crime. That's all I gave it. And if you really want to go as discovery writer as possible. You could start it this way with absolutely no idea of where to go. And then it actually gave me a decent opening scene um, about a, you know someone finding a body by the bookstore and all of these things. And so I could say, um, so I'm just gonna leave this as it is. But basically the premise behind Edit As You Go is to just say this, you know, read through this. And then once you've read it through, you get a nice idea of where it should go next. And so you just add the next beat uh, on the fly. So I'm gonna say something like, the police arrive and begin questioning Maggie. And it's implied that they might suspect she had something to do with Oh, I, sorry, I had the wrong name here. Uh, Jenna, they're questioning Jenna. Something to do uh, with Maggie's death. And then maybe you might wanna add something like write another 500 words. Correct some typo here and then see what it gives you back. And now here it is. Here's a continuation of the scene with another 500 words. The police stormed into the bakery, their footsteps echoing on the hardwood floors. In seconds, Jenna found herself surrounded by uniformed officers barking questions. What's your name? Jenna Hayes. I found Maggie like this when I got here. And what's your relationship to the victim? Interrupted the officer taking notes. Relationship? Maggie was my friend. She owned the, this bakery. I would never... And you, and you, you know, continue on. Now, obviously, you probably already noticed a few inconsistencies here already. Uh, this is not going to be perfect. And so you take what it gives you and then you edit it. And then the tricky part becomes how do I get it to follow what I edited instead of following what it originally did. And so what you would do is you would take your edited 500 words here or you know however many words this is, probably not 500. Uh, and then you would feed it back into the AI and say, here is my revised version of what you gave me. Can you continue off from this point with, and then you give it the next beat. And so with that in mind, you're basically editing each section as it, as it comes to you. Um, and then you are revising that and then feeding it back into the AI so it can continue off from that point that you just gave it. 
you might also realize that eh, this isn't really the direction I want to go. And so you would change the prompt and say, do a little bit more of this instead. And it's just up to you. And so that would be the primary process that I would use if I were discovery writing with AI. Another thing that you could do is use the yes, but no, and framework. This is a framework that I learned from Mary Robinette Kowal via Brandon Sanderson's online course that you can find on YouTube about how to write. And he is not a discovery writer either, which is why he lets Mary Robinette Kowal talk about this structure. But it's basically uh, a good way to keep tension heightened in a discovery written book without, um, you know, it's a good way to keep it from just getting boring, which can sometimes happen if you're discovery writing. Uh, you apply this framework of yes and no but. Um, and I'll give you a uh, sense of what that looks like. And so here's the prompt that I use for this. For the next part of the scene, use a yes, but, no, and framework to determine what happens next. Did the character obtain her, his or her, and in this case it's a her, objective? If yes, say yes, but, and point out a potential complication or conflict. If no, say no and, and specify what else might have happened instead to further increase the conflict and tension. Do not write the scene yet, and instead present me with your solution for my approval. All right, so if I give it this, it will give me either two options, either a yes, but, or a no and. Um, and so this is just a way to kind of question it on where it should go. Rather than giving it the next story beat yourself, you can kind of figure out with the AI what the next story beat should be. And so it gave me a no and here in this case. No, and the lead detectives place, hand, place Jenna in handcuffs stating that they have to take her down to the station for more formal questioning. Jenna protests her arrests and accuses the detectives of not truly searching for the real murderer. This raises the stakes in the conflict as Jenna realizes she is now a prime suspect in Maggie's murder and must fight to clear her name. Um, and then if you like that, you could say, I like that and ask it to write that next section. Or you could say, can you give me a yes, but instead, I'll put that in quotes. So it knows what I'm referring to. And then it should give you the other way around. Yes. The lead de detective believes Jenna is innocent, but informs her that they need to take her to the station for more questioning to get all the details of what she saw. However, Jenna is still in handcuffs being escorted by the police car. Uh, yeah, so it got that wrong. But um, you get the idea of how to use this particular framework. It's a fun way to kind of keep the tension heightened and keep people really gripped through the story because even if they succeed, something else happens. You know, yes, but... Um, and if they don't succeed, then you pile on something else by saying no and. It's a great way to just keep that conflict and tension going in a discovery written book. All right. The next thing I wanted to talk about is what if you're using Pseudowrite? So this is Pseudowrite's story engine. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about this. Uh, I still believe that story engine is the best way to write books with AI at the moment, especially if you want something that'll walk you through it. You can get into more advanced tactics with Claude or ChatGPT that you can't really do in Story Engine, but most of those tactics, like I said, are going to be advanced. And so link is down below if you want to check out uh, Story Engine. You, you can get uh, 10,000 free words if you go through my link and support the channel while you do so. Uh, but here's what Story Engine looks like blank. You have brain dump, genre, style, you have synopsis, you have your characters and your outline. The only thing that is required here out of all these things, the only one that you have to put something in there is the outline. And um, that is because the beats and the prose need the, that outline to generate. But there's nothing saying that you have to actually know what it says in the outline. Like you don't have to actually put anything in there. So you could just say act one, introduction, colon, chapter one. And while you can't leave this completely blank, you can put something very simple like the start of the story. All right. And then from here you can generate beats and it will basically generate beats off of just that little bit. It doesn't need anything else to generate these beats. All right, and as you can see, it's generated 13 beats. 
um, without really any information about what's going on here. Now, if you wanted, I would still probably recommend filling out genre and style because I'm guessing even if you're discovery writing, you still have a sense of what your genre is gonna be. Uh, you might have something to add here in brain dump and like core concept that you wanna add. And then style is just good to have um, to keep it in a style that you like because you're gonna to need to be tweaking that so far. But let's say you, you know, you don't even have that. And so let's say you wanted to move beat by beat like I showed you how to do in Claude. And we're just gonna look here at these first two beats that I'm just gonna use for an example, but you can add your own beats here and say, okay, introduce the main character, Sarah, and establish the setting of the story, a small town in the countryside surrounded by rolling hills and dense forests. Describes Sarah's personality as shy and introverted and her hobbies as reading books and taking long walks in the woods, establishing her character motivations. Um, so very vague, right? And so you would want to fix these up as you as you wish. I would do them, if you're doing this in pseudo right? I would do this in groups of two, do two beats at a time. And the reason for that is because that is how Pseudorite processes it. It only does two beats at a time. And so what I would do is I would start with these two beats and just for the sake of time in recording this video, I'm not gonna fix these up, but I would, if you have an idea of where your book should start, I would start with the first two beats, just write them out. Um, you can work off of a generated list here or you can just write your own. Personally, I recommend writing your own putting them in here, and then you come over here, select the type of prose you wanna use, whether that's most accurate or best prose. I'd, I'd pick either one of the two. I'll just use most accurate for this. And then you hit generate, and it will generate the beats, uh, or generate the prose for those first two beats. And then you can ask it to pause, and it will say finishing beat, like you see it say here and it will just continue writing until it finishes those first two beats. What you can then do is go in here and actually fix this up how you like it, fix up the, the pros here um, until you get it just like you like it. Then come back here into the beats and add beat number three and beat number four, and then you add in what you think should go next in those beats, and then you can come here. Now let's, so let's just say that these two beats here have been um, fully fleshed out and you've edited them like you like. And then you've added two more beats here. Then you can just say continue and it'll take on the next two beats just like you like it. And that way you can move just one little bit at a time without having to put anything in any of these other fields except for this tiny little bit in the outline that you're kind of required to put there. But you honestly don't need to put much there. Um, if you don't really know exactly which way it's going. And you can also work one chapter at a time. So say you finish this chapter and you've got it where you like it and you're ready to start chapter two, all you do is put chapter two and say, this is what happens next or uh, whatever you wanna put there. And so that is how you do that. And uh, I think that's really it for pseudo right now. Let's move on to another tool that I wanted to spotlight and that was verb.ai Verb.ai is a fantastic tool. I haven't talked about too much on this channel because it's not widely used but the text that it generates isn't bad and It works very much in a format that feels better for a discovery writer and so the way it works here. First of all, it has a really nice clean interface, uh, which I do like. It makes it very easy to just get into that zone, that writing zone. And in fact, when I have used Verb in the past, it has felt very much like getting into that normal writer flow state, which is honestly a great thing. And I've talked to the people at Pseudorite asking them to have something like this because um, I think having this format is really good for getting into that flow state. Uh, but if we go here, uh, the way it works is you it has slash commands. So you put in a slash and then the one you're usually gonna wanna use is describe. Uh, you could use continue and it will just pick up the narrative and make its own decisions about where it's gonna go. But usually you wanna describe and then you put in essentially the next beat. So this is just a bunch of text from Alice in Wonderland. All right, so um, uh, let's say the rabbit 
turns around and viciously attacks Alice. And then you hit go. And uh, I don't know what this is going to get that. In that in an instant, the rabbit turned upon Alice and lunged forward with a savage snarl. Her teeth glinted in the moonlight and she snapped angrily at Alice as she scrambled away, desperately kicking her feet against the ground to propel herself out of reach. So it does a pretty good job at uh, doing the language here. And I actually really enjoy verb for this reason. Uh, it's not a tool I've talked about too much, like I said, uh, because I feel like it's a little limited in what it can do. But if you like to write in this particular way, definitely check it out. It's a really good tool. And it's actually currently free to use because it is in open beta uh, while they kind of figure out some things. And so definitely go check that out and I'll link to that one below. Uh, but that those are my tips for discovery writing using AI. I did find some of these ideas I got from Jay Thorne's book on discovery writing. And that was a fascinating book. Uh, there aren't too many like actionable tips in it, but I loved what it did because he basically shows his creative process um, where he created this series, basically a um, basically a serial of all of these these different short stories, essentially, where a guy is having a conversation with a voice in his head and the voice is chat GPT. And so he gives this really complex cr prompt to get ChatGPT to act in a certain way. And then they go back and forth and he writes the bits that are the human th uh, talking to himself. And then ChatGPT writes the voice that's in his head and they go back and forth. And it's just a fascinating way to create what I think is a new art form. It's, it's uh, something you can't really get without the use of AI. Uh, the only way you could have gotten similar results is to have two writers where one person is writing one half and the other person writes the other and they just go back and forth like that, which is also kind of a cool concept. But the fact that he was able to do it with AI, it was just this, it blew my mind and opened it to possibilities of the type of new fiction that we could get out of this AI human collaboration. So definitely go check out that book if you're interested in learning more and I'll see you in the next video.